everyone, and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We did a uh, Cab Franc Blind Tasting Challenge in the last episode. Now we're going to do a Syrah, and this is Washington State Syrah Challenge. We have four Washington State Syrahs. Which one will come out on top? That is the question. Uh, Syrah does really well in Washington State. In fact, it's probably one of their best varietals. It's just too bad that Watch Syrah has really fallen off the map in sales. I'd really like to see people get back at Syrah. Now, I have a question for you at the end of this video, like I did on the last one, and I'd like to get a comment from you. You need to subscribe to my channel, just saying, but uh, so you can see what's going on. Yes. So, Blind Syrah, Washington State Syrah. They're well known for their Syrah. They do it better, I think, than uh, most places in the world. And this is number one. Now, I, I screwed up again. I got the, so I put the one a little bit lower. This is number one. I need plain bags, really. Bad. Give it a little rinse. It's interesting that Syrah has kind of fallen off the map, and I always say it has something to do a little bit with uh, Shiraz from Australia, which was really big, I'd say 10 years ago, or more. And, uh, wow, I can smell this one. Crazy, okay. Good color, solid, black, almost black. Deep purple black. Wow, the aromatics on this are really powerful. I could smell it as soon as it hit the glass. Definitely boysenberry. Big time boysenberry. I remember eating boysenberries when I was a kid. We had a big boysenberry patch out in the backyard when I lived in Bremerton. And, you know, I ate them all the time. Love boysenberry. With boysenberry, a little bit of licorice. Some tobacco notes, and then deep, deep down inside, I just get a little bit of that bacon fat that is so common with um, Syrah. So you have to hold back on a comment I want to make, because it's going to spoil the answer to the question at the end of the episode. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut if I can. Now, they do a lot of Syrah in uh, California as well. Uh, they call it the Roan Rangers, and, you know, a lot of those Syrahs are good. I mean, I know um, Schaefer does one called Relentless that really is outstanding. And one of my favorite Syrahs outside of Washington State uh, uh, comes from J. Lore. They do a really nice Syrah there. So, a little bit of that bacon fat coming through with the boysenberries. A bit of tobacco. Let's see what we get on the palate. solid Syrah. I mean, this is, has a little bit of meatiness to it, a little bit of spice on the back end, a little bit of that white pepper coming through. Big time boysenberry. Get more plum on this one. A little bit of licorice coming through. Tobacco, but mostly big boysenberry and plum notes, but they're restrained by the tannins. It's nice and balanced. Good wine, nice spice, long finish. Serve up this to your guests and you are spoiling their asses. This is great Syrah. Good representation of what Washington can do with Syrah. The spice is crazy on this. A little bit of baking spice with the pepper. Very meaty on the back side. Meaty notes are very common with Syrah. Especially in one area, which I'm going to ask at the end of the episode. So this is a solid effort right here. Yeah. Solid Washington State Syrah. If you put your mouth to this one, I wish you guys could be drinking this with me. You'd know exactly what I'm talking about. Good balance, complexity. Tannins are solid, but very smooth, but edgy. A little bit of edginess to them. Let's move on. Oh, I like that one. Number four. Oh. Had my wife egg these up. Thank you, Susie. 
She bagged up the last episode as well. Number two. Okay. What I like about Sarah, the colors are crazy on this stuff. No, they don't use Mega Purple. They are just, the extraction of the color on Sarah is amazing. Number two. Well, sloppy. Menthol, big time. I got menthol right off the bat. And definitely a minty component on this one. A little bit of licorice. Just, uh, the alcohol is burning my nostrils just a little bit. Almost like Get it, bordering eucalyptus, which I find interesting from Washington State. Definitely plum notes coming through. A little bit of licorice. Get a little bark component as well. Let's see what we get on the palate. A little high test here. Good. I mean, there's a lot of alcohol in this baby. I can feel it on my palate. But it has, other than that, it has good balance. Nice plum uh, notes coming through. A little bit of currant. More currant than boysenberry. Kind of plum currant boysenberry, I'd say. This one is also meaty on the back side. The mint comes through on the palate. Not in a huge way, you know, not like biting into a peppermint patty, but definitely get that mintiness is there. Which I find quite interesting. I, I have a feeling this is a little hot. Um, I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong before. But now, on the finish of this one, there's lots of tobacco. This is a tobacco driven finish, blended with the plums and currants. Good balance. Other than the alcohol, I, I like this wine not as much as the first one, but I think it's a solid Syrah. Real nice and meaty on the back side. I'm curious about the alcohol on number two. Just kind of curious about that. Hopefully I don't forget. Sometimes I kind of forget. Okay. I'm going to go... Still a good effort. Not my favorite of the two so far, but it's okay. Real kind of nervous about this one because packed in here somewhere is a Syrah from my winery of the year. I've never tasted it before, so I don't know where that lands. Okay, number three. That's four. Number three. Hoping it lands high, but who knows, you know? One never knows. Really stoked about my winery of the year this year. Uh, the first episode of 2020 featured Tempranillo from both... From both it's... It, it's kind of a wineries of the year, but I don't really want to say that. He's the same winemaker. He just has two different efforts. Um, Pumum and Idilico. Idilico focuses on Spanish varietals. Pumum more on traditional varietals. So number three. So we get on those. Color on this one is... And they're all so dark. I mean, it's just incredible how dark they are. Almost black. Purple black. Now this has an interesting nose. It smells like a pot roast. Uh, wow. Candied currants, pot roast. Bacon fat big time. Now this is, this is what I... One of the things I like about Washington State so is you get that kind of bacon fat. Not ham hock like the Predator, Lauren. More bacon fat. Real interesting, almost like, 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 it's like somebody sprinkled cinnamon on their bacon. Don't do that, by the way. A little bit of bark and licorice coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. Okay. Solid Syrah. Giving number one some competition, big time here. I like this one because it's very meaty. Uh, the place, the, there's another place in the world that 
meat is a big part of their profile in Syrah. Um, this has boysenberries, currants, um, bacon fat on palate, solid tannins but smooth, a little bit of spice on the back side of this one, and the meaty component just really hangs on. Good acidity too, which is more than any of the other two, more than the other two so far. I like that. Good quality in a wine. Acidity helps it age. So I'm saying this is an ageable Syrah, probably more than the first two. Good balance of acidity, fruit, uh, tannins. This one is well put together. Now, the thing about how I'm going to grade this one, because of what I gave the grade on the first one, this one I'm going to have to really think about because... I'm really digging this one, big time. Yeah, solid Syrah. Mmm. Young too. I'm gonna call this young. This has great potential. Okay. Woo, so far so good. Let's move on. Number four. Number four. Man, I'm stoked to find out how these turn out. My wonder of the year is in here. Hope they do well. I have no idea which one it is either. Let's see what we get on those. Number four. Oh, color. Now this is a lot more violet. Dark black with a little violet hue to it. Violet hue, you like that? Hmm. Hmm. This has a little bit of funk on the nose, not in a bad way. Just a little funkified. Like there's a, yeah, there's a little barnyard, but not, but barely. Not stinky. That makes sense. You know, just the essence of barnyard. A lot of bark on this nose. A lot of bark. Blackberry. Tint of vanilla coming through on this one. Let's see what we get on the palate. Wow, solid Syrah, good tannins, a little bit of spice on the back side. Right up front you get that kind of bark, blackberry. I am getting a little plum on this one as well. Red flower notes underneath, kind of an underbelly of red flowers. Big time on the bark, a little bit of tobacco as well. A little bit of that big fat on the mid-palate, into the finish. In the finish, the tannins get real edgy, almost grippy, but not quite. Just there. That's a good, that's a good straw as well. They've all been good. A little lighter in the pants than the other three, but still very solid Syrah from Washington State. I like the balance, I like the intensity of the tannins, but they're very approachable. I like the spice on the back end, more black pepper spice on this one. It's, it's also kind of meaty. Get that hit of bacon fat in the mid palate. Solid Syrah from Washington State. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Four Washington State Syrah, let's put them in the order. Yeah. Okay. okay, so in last place, I shouldn't say last place, but yes, in last place out of the four, 
with a B minus B. This is number two, and this is one I was curious about the alcohol level. We will check it out. Number two is the Pumum Columbia Valley Syrah from Pumum Mount. So there you go, my winery of the year, last place. Still, I liked it a lot, 2014. Uh, just curious about the alcohol. I thought the alcohol was a little bit high on this one. It's rolls in at $30. Still good Syrah, but yes. Who are they going up against? That's the question. The 14.7 alcohol. Now I'd like to see what the rest are. 14.7 is up there. They can cheat by a percentage point. I just burned my nose hairs a little bit. Still very good though. B minus B. A little disappointed, but that my winery of the year came in last place of the four. But you know, there could be some stiff competition. Okay, in third place with a straight up B. So not that far ahead of the pummel is the Tranche 2000 Tranche Estates 2016 Estate Grown, and this is a Walla Walla Valley Blue Mountain Vineyard 2015 Syrah Tranche. There you go. Wow. Tranche Cellars, uh, Corliss Winery owns them. Uh, so these guys, you know, that's good company for pummel. You know, just saying. Just saying. Okay. In second place with a straight up A. And I was struggling with this one because this has good acidity, good balance, good tannins. Straight up A. Uh, the 2014 Dunham Cellars Syrah Columbia Valley. Dunham is a very well known winery in uh, Washington State. There you go. Nice job, Dunham Cellars. A straight up A. I see I had a hard time because. I had scored this one so high that I had to, you know, drop down to an A on that one. Yeah, tough company, guys. I'm proud of my winery of the year. They did okay against this stellar group with a straight up A plus, which I don't do very often. But this was a very, I was excited about this Syrah quite a bit. This is the um, uh, Cullen Hills, the Dungeon Syrah 2015 Columbia. Valley, this rolls in at $41. There you go. Number one. Dunham, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Dunham rolled in at about, oh yeah, I wrote it down somewhere about 30, 385. God damn it. Tranche is 40, and Pummel is 30. So 30, 40, 34, 41. So, there you go. All very good Syrahs from Washington State, which is where they make some of the best Syrah in the world. But, 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 where is Syrah most famous? Not Australia, although they do a lot of Shiraz in Australia. Not Disson, Australia. I think they do great Shiraz. Where else besides Australia do they some of the best, uh, most amazing Syrah in the world? You make a comment. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day to watch. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel, please. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your white dollars.